All right, let's go to Atlanta, home of the most absurd airport on planet Earth, and talk to Janelle. What's up, Janelle? Hey, Dr. John. What's up? How we doing? Uh, I'm doing okay. I have to remind myself to breathe. I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why are you nervous? I'm not great at this. You, you know that. No, you're awesome. Because I'm talking to you, and I'm like, okay, so it's like millions of people probably listening, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so nervous. But Janelle, I make up all those numbers. There's like 38 listeners. <laughs> no, you don't. Max. But, uh, thank Max. you. Thank you so much for taking my call. I really appreciate it. You I listen got it. to your show all the time. You've helped me with so many things that have been going through my head. And um, I just want to say thank you, and I'm. it's such an honor to get to talk to you. It's an honor to talk to you. I'm really grateful. Um, by the way, while I've got you, please do whatever you can. Run for public office. Do whatever you can. Fix fix the airport. What are we doing? Oh, I'm working on it. I barely fly out of here. It's so ridiculous. So, <laughs> by the time you walk from the front gate to your like gate, you could have driven like all the way to Nebraska. Anyway, that's a oh, whole different conversation. What is up? That's a whole different conversation. That's not what you call for. All so, right, so like, so hit me with it. What's up? Okay, so um, I'm going to give you the backstory, and then I'll ask my question. It'll all tie it in, so bear with me. Um, so my husband and I, we've, we've been married for 12 years. We have two kids. Um, we got married pretty quickly. It was a pretty brief courtship. So a lot of things you would find out about your partner before you get married, we kind of found out after we were already married. So it was <laughs> kind of rough. Awesome. <laughs> First first couple of years. You said that um, you said that so eloquently. Some of the is, things you find out beforehand, <laughs> um, we found out we after. Found out afterwards. But the way like, but yeah. I know what that probably means and the way you said that so gently. So you're a delight. Okay, keep going. It's been twelve years. I, I trust me, I get it right out. So our main problem or my main issue has been with um infidelity with him, mostly just internet issues and texting and messaging and Facebook and Instagram and so forth. Um, we've been to counseling quite a few times, three, four times on and off. Um, he's also done individual counseling a couple times and then things seem to be pretty good for a while, a few years. And then, you know, things happen and we kind of end up back here. So um, a few months ago, he started acting a little bit differently, going out more Staying out a little bit longer, um, very protective with his phone and accusing me of cheating. So um, the light bulb kind of went off and I was like, OK, something's going on here. So um, about a couple of weeks ago, I decided to do some investigation. Um, so I went on his computer and I saw that he was on a dating site. Ooh. Yeah. So I, I, I catfished him. Um, no way. I sure, yeah, way. <laughs> <laughs> you did? Did he fall for I it? Did. Oh, he sure did. Oh, um, this is my favorite call ever, ever. Yeah. Hey, can he we call him right it. now? And I'm gonna pretend to be uh, <laughs> the the husband of the person. Please, please. Oh my gosh. Um, I, the the thing was, I knew it was probably gonna happen because I know my husband has been 12 years. So, um, um, I created a fake profile. I was messaging him. He was all for it. Oh, he you're the worst and incredible and all at the same time. He was inviting me out to dinner and lunch, and um, he was saying he was um, divorced. He did say he had two kids, though, so at least, you know, that was something. So um, so then I started. I was going along with it, and I was going to, you know, meet up with him. Yeah. For lunch I was going to say, make point. a date with him, man, and record it, and we'll put it on the show. <laughs> But but this is what happened. I kept looking, and I came across two um, credit card receipts, and uh, I saw um, like two hotel receipts. Ah, uh, yeah, so not, funny kind of not funny anymore. Not funny anymore. Yeah, then yeah. I kind of lost it. Yeah, um, not funny. Anymore. And I confronted him, um, and he lied and said the first one that was in our city, he got it for a friend. Don't buy it. And the other one that was not in our city, it was when he went out of town to visit family and he said he didn't want to stay at their house. So he got a hotel. I didn't buy that either because he could have just told me about it. He didn't. He had me thinking he was staying at his family's house and he wasn't. So I didn't buy any of that. Um, 
So my husband has a tendency. So the counseling we've been going through over the years, we've kind of figured out, and he'll admit that he has an issue with attention and validation. And it's like when I'm not. Hold on, hold on, Janelle, 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 Janelle. Your husband cheats on you. Period. Period. I have problems with validation. I don't get meet women in hotel rooms across the country. Yeah, I know. Uh, I like to, um, for my wife to tell me nice things. I like for my wife to tell me she's proud of me. I like to fill in the blank. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah, right. so you can go to counseling and learn all these neat things and all that kind of stuff. All of that is a complete and utter wash. It means nothing. If your husband is meeting other women in hotel rooms across the United States and then lying to you about it. Pure, yeah. I mean, just period. End of discussion. And here's what I think is, is unfortunate is that you are so kind. And you are so, there's something inside of you that has told you that you don't have equal value to him that you have come up with some really complicated narrative as to why this is mostly your fault. And I'm telling you as a husband, that is not a true story that you tell yourself. You are married to a serial cheater. Period. Yeah. Yeah. He's a guy who steps out on his wife repeatedly. And I've said on the show, I'll say it again. I have a ton of sympathy for um, a business trip one night stand. I have a ton of sympathy for I met somebody. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying if somebody sits down and goes, dude, this thing happened, things happen. Or I was working on a project with somebody for a year at work, and I, I just fell head over heels. I get that. This is persistent and ongoing He's spitting in his wife's face, telling her she's stupid. You're so dumb, you can't even find out. And when you're looking at receipts, he's like, you're an idiot. And you, for some reason, Janelle, believe, yeah, you're probably right. Even as you described, Janelle, listening to you, even as you described the story about him going to see family but staying in a hotel, when I promise you, when he was there, he was telling you that, I'm at mama's house and she's whatever, you, the way you told that story, if you go back and listen, you don't fully, you're not 100% that you're right. You're about 85%. I'm telling you, you're 100% right. Yeah, I know. And you probably don't want to be a, a statistic. You probably have done whatever you could do for the last decade to keep his family together. And you're married to someone who's doing everything he can to unwind it. True or false? Yeah. You're right. You are right. And I've got like a like a knot in my stomach talking to you right now. You're right. Like I'm sick right now. Did you tell him that you uh, were catfishing him? Did you tell him? Or does he even know that yet? Yeah, yeah he knows. Um when I confronted him, it all came out. Um, he knew. He, then he apologized and, you know, acting remorseful and saying he wasn't going to go and yada, 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 which is a lie. Of course. He was going to meet up. Of course, that's a lie. So the real question is less about him. The question is about you. Is my marriage fixable? I think any marriage is fixable, quite honestly. Right. But I, you can't fix it alone. Period. And quite honestly, you've tried for for 10 years. You have to have a man that will tell you the truth. You have to have a man that will tell you I'm sorry. And you have to have a man that will not end up in a hotel room with a bunch of other women he's not married to. Are you perfect in this marriage? No. I don't even I don't even know and I'm telling you no. Of course you're not. No. Right. And has he weaponized any imperfection to give him liberty and license to do whatever he wants to? Yeah, absolutely. And you're worth more than that. And so are those two little kids. 
Let me say it this way. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take back my answer. Ask me your question again. Is my marriage fixable? I will answer it this way. No. Your marriage as it was is over. Can you and your husband build something completely new? Yes. Have you heard my Twin ta- Towers analogy? Oh, yeah. I okay. have. Same thing. What y'all had is over. Those towers have fallen down. They are in rubble and in ash and smoke and there's dust everywhere. The choice you have to make, and I think right now it's, it's the initial choice is you alone. Are you going to walk away from the towers and let nature take them back? Or are you going to sit down with him and say, from this point forward, we build something new and here's my stipulations. Here's what I need to move forward. And then you'll go get some professionals to help you rebuild something completely new. And that might mean new jobs. That might mean moving. That might mean everything is different because everything is different. Right. I mean, you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I do. I. My, my guess is you've had some dark moments like where you're just sitting in the shower when you're finally by yourself. And you weep so hard you can't you can't catch your breath. Fair? Yeah, that's fair. That is so true. Uh, I'm just wondering why you know why me? Why why this? What what is it that I did? No, you can't. You can't. You, your husband made some bad choices over and over and over and over and over again. And at this point. If I'm being super frank, um, I'm worried about your health and safety. I'm worried about him bringing something home from some woman that you don't know about or multiple women that you don't know about. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm as concerned for your safety right this second as I am for your marriage. I am too. I said we have to definitely go get, go get tested because I don't feel... I don't feel safe. Right where, 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 Janelle, sweetheart, where does this come from? Who taught you that what you feel in your guts is so wrong? Because you've known he was cheating on you for a long time. I knew. And even the way you just said just now, like, yeah, I told him about there's an uncertainty Instead of a proclamation at your front door, you don't come in this home until you go get tested, period. And you show, put the, you hand me the results. Like, who told you that? That you're worth so little? That the what you feel and what you think and what you need is of of secondary importance? Again, it didn't help that I see myself in... My parents' relationship, where they're still together, but I mean, my my dad practically practically cheered on my mom the entire forty five years they've been married. So it's what your body knows, right? Yeah, yeah. Except the rules have changed, and the game has changed. And Janelle, my friend Janelle, is not going to take this crap anymore. Here's why: because your two kids aren't going to repeat this thing. Right. They're going to have a very clear picture in their head of what either a strong boundary and self-worth looks like and a single mom who cannot be stopped come hell or high water, or they're going to have a ringside seat to a couple fight and scratch and claw their way to something so remarkable and strong and beautiful moving forward. but they're not going to learn. This is what marriage looks like. Yeah, you're right. Fair? Fair. You're absolutely right. Now, this is the part of the story where, like in the movie, when the music swells and then like the montage scene happens. This isn't, but that's not reality. Reality is this. Do you work? Not right now. Um, I got laid off a couple months ago and I'm looking for, for work now. Okay. This kind of self-proclamation has very real economic consequences. 
right? It sounds right. easy for me sitting in Nashville, Tennessee with a, with a good job to say, you should just, and that's why I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to tell you to run out today. Because there's a real question of where do you go and how do you feed your kids? How do you eat, right? Right. That's a very real thing. And you, you know as well as I do, the court processes are so jacked up, it takes so freaking long to get anything done. Right. And so I would, here, here's my, my, I mean, I, I just love talking to you. You're a fun, you're funny. You're like, you have such a great personality. Thank you, Dr. John. And I'm heartbroken in my guts for you. Yeah. And I, I, I don't think I've told you anything you didn't already know. I'm heartbroken in my guts because I sat with women as they've walked what the next two years of your life is going to be. And it's not going to be pleasant. And staying in this is not going to be pleasant. You're right. And so the path you have to choose is not one of ease and least resistance and one of really hard. You have two incredibly difficult paths ahead of you. And so I always want someone to choose the difficult path that's going to lead to freedom, not lead to repeating a cycle of abuse and you're just going to take it and this is just the way things are over and over again. And dude, I, I, I would, I'd love to talk to your husband if he wants to call me. He, he won't, he won't, but I'd love to. He probably won't. He won't. Oh, I know he won't. He won't. Here's, here's, I think your next steps are. Number one, I'd go get a counselor today. In fact, I'll hook you up with three months of free better help. If you don't have a counselor in your area, um, stay on the line here and we'll get you a code and you can call somebody and be on the phone or talking to them via Zoom within the next 24 hours. Thank you. And here's what we're talking about. You need to get somebody and I want you to be very specific when you ask, I need a game plan to begin to identify my next steps. I've been married to somebody for a decade who cheats on me and cheats on me and cheats on me. And now he's spending money out of our family account. Now he's increased up an uptick in lying. He's now traveling distances and I need to figure out what my next steps are. And what they'll do is they'll help you think through boundaries, think through, do you have a mom or dad's house? You can go stay at for six months with the kids. Do you have an attorney? Do you have like some of those hard questions you're gonna have to face? Also, Here's a testing site. I mean, they're going to walk you through all those, those questions. The second thing is, is I want you to get a couple of girlfriends. Do you have two or three women in your life that you trust a lot? I do. I want you to take them out to coffee sometime this week. And I want you to tell them the truth because you have never told them, have you? No. It's time. You need some real people in your corner, in your local community that knows the truth about what you're experiencing and dealing with. And this is part of the, the rising. This is when Janelle begins to, to come out of the water, like on her own two feet. And this is my life. When am I doing this anymore? Tell me why that scares you to death. Because I'm going to have to come out of my... Yes, it's everything's okay, Shell. Yeah. Yep. You have created the most beautiful, it's all great, and I'm hilarious facade. Yeah. You're so good. You're so good. Yeah, that is, you have, you have, you, I was going to say you have no idea, but you probably do. Because <laughs> we're the couple that everyone looks at. Yes, like, they oh do. my God, you guys are so perfect, and it's all great, and, and all that. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're going to lose your identity. The identity as the perfect married woman. And we're going to change that identity for the woman who tells the truth. And the woman who is stronger than iron. You're right. Over the years, I've just gotten less. So the more it's happened, it's just the braver and braver I'm getting as far as I need to leave. I need to leave. Yeah, but it's very, very, very hard to leave by yourself. It is. It is. That's why I want you to talk to these three women. And there's something surreal about saying it out loud. 
even you started this call with me like, well, and this is going on and he's got some needs so bad that I, I mean, I feel bad. I interrupted you. I would love for you to sit down with these three women over coffee or tea or whatever y'all you like to drink and sit down and go, my husband's been cheating on me for a decade. And now he's moved on to multiple women in multiple cities and it ends now. And their jaws will hit the floor and you can smile and say, I didn't mean to drop it on you like that, but I for sure meant to drop it on you like that. I need your help. And there's something empowering about it because you don't want to say it out loud because you don't want it to be true. And I love you enough to tell you it is true. Yeah. You're the, this is the first time I've actually said it. I know. I can hear it on you. I know. <laughs> I know. <sighs> Do you trust me that there is, n- I, kn- I know there's nothing easy that comes next. Nothing. But you have a great picture of your mom, that hollowed out shell. Yeah. That distant look. That dad who walks in and out of that house like he owns planet Earth. Yes. Yeah. That's you. That's the trajectory. And that's if your husband chooses not just to bail or doesn't get somebody pregnant. You're right. I'd call those women ASAP. Like, I'd call them today or shoot them a text message and say, we need to meet tomorrow morning for breakfast. We need to talk. Oh, my gosh, I'm sick to my guts. I hate this for you. I hate this for you. I hate this for you. Whew. When this call first started out, I thought we were going to have some fun in the catfishing thing, and this got real, real, real fast. Here's the deal, Janelle. Um, hang on the line. We're going to hook you up with that counseling, and I'll be here every step of the way. And um, you've got Jenna's contact info. I want you to reach out anytime you want to be back on the show, you want to talk. Um, I got you, okay? Man, what a mess. Somebody threw a grenade in the middle of your home, and it was not you but what comes next is going to be largely what you decide not by your hand but in your lap and here we are and here we go you didn't cause it but you're part of the cleanup crew and you're part of the what's next crew and i'll be here with you